Comanius, Stones, Minerals, Metals, Part 1, Stones, Janua Linguarum Reserata de la Pitibus, Periton Liton, Orbis Sensualium Pictus Lapides, Poilitoe. Hello, polymath. You've studied Comanius the beginnings, and you're now an accomplished theologist, historian, cosmologist, astronomer, perhaps also astrologist, and mathematician. You've also studied Comanius the elements and are also an accomplished pyrologist, meteorologist, hydrologist, and geologist. And now we're going to study stones, minerals, metals, and it's your chance to become a lithologist and petrologist. What is the difference between a lithologist and a petrologist? Hint, there is one. And in the next topic, metals, you will become a metallurgist, a mineralogist, a chemist, or perhaps alchemist, and geochemist. By the way, the etymology, etymos logos, of chemistry is uncertain. You can check out the uncertain etymology of chemistry on Wikipedia, which is what Jimmy Wales and Larry Sanger named their online free encyclopedia that now has over 35 million articles. They coined the word Wikipedia from wiki, and paideia, the Greek word for education used in Encuclios Paideia. Ward Cunningham invented this type of web-based collaborative software, which he called a wiki, the Hawaiian word for quick. Cunningham named his first wiki application WikiWikiWeb. But wait a minute, here comes Ms. Latin, irate, irata, and she chimes in, Hey, what am I, chopped liver? Are you not also an accomplished student from Studenes, Studentis, scientist from Scientia, and linguist from Lingua? Janua de la Pitibus, Peri ton Liton. Lapis cominutus arena est. Quae si crassior fit sabulum et glarea vocatur. Rudus sunt asulae seo secamenta vel fragmena petrarum, vel rupium. Holitos tribes psamos e psamatos e tapsamia e amos e amatos, pacuteros de on caclex e coclaxistin. Ta erepia peripsemata e apocomata ton petron estin. Comenius uses an elementary scale of grain size here. Glarea, arena, crassior. Caclex, psamu, pacuteros. And so we show some modern day soil classification systems based on grain size. Saxa. Umi jacent, siwe extant, siwe deletescunt. Hypetrae epites ges, et prucusae et lantanusae centae. Hoc saxum extat, haute petra pro eke. Num deletescit hoc saxum, ara lantane haute petra. Scopuli et cautes fragosae et inacesae eminent. Hoi scopeloi, traciae traces, cae spilades aprositoi ex ecusin. Crepido prominent, aporox pro eque. Latin has many words for rock and rock formations with various shades of meaning with respect to size, shape, location, and accessibility, visibility, danger. 
Of course, these don't all have precise equivalents in Greek. Saxum, rupes, later Latin also borrows petra from Greek petra, kautes, scopulus, an adaptation of Greek skopulos, and a couple other words that can mean stone or rock, silex, besides its specialized meaning, which we've already seen, flint, and scrupus. Scrupulus, calque o elapsus, nisi eximator, urget moleste. Litax hepse pis toi hypodemati impesusa ud ex aeretesa, tus hodeontas en ocle. Calceus was a type of Roman shoe. It is equivalent more or less to the Greek hypodema coelon, and calceus comes from the Latin word calx, calcus for heel. Calx is an interesting Latin word. We've just seen calx, calcus meaning heel, and from it calceus shoe. There are also the derivatives calcar, calcaris, spur, and the verb calcare, to trample. There is an important homonym, calx calcus, with a different etymology, possibly cognate with Greek calyx, and a different set of meanings, namely lime. By electrolysis on a lime compound, Sir Humphrey Davy in 1808 isolated and named the chemical element calcium from this meaning of calx. And from this meaning lime, calx could also mean chalk, which is a form of the sedimentary rock limestone. The Old English calc descends from calx in calking from calicare to coat with lime or whitewash. And from the meaning chalk, the finishing line in a race course, since it was marked with chalk, and hence more broadly, calx could also mean goal. And calx could mean a small stone, hence calculus, the diminutive, a small stone or pebble used in making calculations, and obviously where we get our name calculus. Hepsepis, sepidos in Greek, is a pebble. It's a diminutive of hepsepos. The Greeks used psepoi for counting, like an abacus, and especially for voting. Psepisdo, or the, or the middle psepisdomai, is the ancient and modern Greek word for to vote. Study this, and you may also become a psephologist. Cote aquimus obtusa, silicae elidimus ignem, ludio lapide metalla probamus, acone ta amblea tegomen, ec calicos Pir ec cruomen, ec tlibomen, litoi lydiae ta metala docimasdomen. Tophus arenosus et staber, fritabilis est, cum ex spongiosus, exesus et bibulus, loteoni siwe fricteoni subserviens. Poros, porinos litos, psamatodes, tracus, eutrastos, e eutribes estin. Hecciseris spongodes, et bebromene diaboros, sompe, prostalutra, caitas tripses, uc anopeles estin. Alabastrites candidissimum marmor. Alabastrites litos, marmaros leucota tosistin. And the mineral alabaster of the ancients was of the calcite type, known as onyx marble or oriental alabaster. There is also a gypsum type of alabaster. Magnes, aeque africata lingula puxidis nauticae, Septentrioni directe seo buertet, alecubitamen a meridiano deweat ad cardenem ocidum vel ortivum deflectens. Hemagnetis litos, 
Kai glota tu pixi diu nati cu aute prostribesa prosten arcton trepetai. Est hopeda apomesembrias prosducin e anatolen apocline. Gemstones are pieces of crystal, that is, mineral, cut and polished mostly for use in jewelry. Some non-minerals, rocks for example, like lapis lazuli, and organic materials such as amber, are used in jewelry and are also referred to as gemstones. Using various criteria, people since antiquity have classified certain gemstones as precious or semi-precious. In modern usage, the precious stones are diamond, ruby, sapphire, and emerald, and all other gemstones are classified as semi-precious. Important ancient sources for the Greek and Latin names and descriptions of stones and gemstones include Theophrastus's De Lapidibus Peri Ton Liton, same title as this Comanian topic, Book 37 of Pliny's Naturalis Historia, Medical writers, such as Dioscorides and Galen, since some stones were believed to have healing properties, and the Bible. However, the identification of the given stone named or described in these sources is often uncertain. This is your chance to become a gemologist. One note about these slides on gems, I've highlighted the modern names of gems and minerals where they first appear, such as garnet, spinel, and pyrope here. Gemarum pretio sissima est carbunculus, well piropus, ton timion liton polutimotate anthrax e piropos, the Latin name carbunculus was used for any red gemstone, for example, the red variety of garnet and spinel. Pyrope, which comes from pure plus opsis, meaning fire eye, and is both an ancient and modern name, is a member of the garnet group of silicate minerals that always displays red in natural samples. Anthrax means charcoal. You learned this in Comenius, the Elements, Part 1, Fire, and was hence also used as a name for gems of a bright red color like that of a burning coal, such as the red garnet. Similarly, in Latin, carbunculus, diminutive of carbo, meant little coal and then was used to name bright red gems. Anthrax carbunculus are burning coals, but are paradoxically classified by Theophrastus and Pliny as incombustible stones, acaustoi litoi. Secunda ab illa adamas, delteron adamas, tum eranus, epeta tu ites litos. The Greek medical writers Dioscorides and Galen say to Itis Litos, which they call the Ethiopian stone, produces a milky color when washed and is good for cleansing the pupils of the eyes. Some modern scholars tentatively identify this stone as turquoise. The word turquoise was coined in the 17th century French Pierre Turquoise, Turkish stone, because it came to the West via Turkish bazaars. I find nothing anywhere for Comenius's Latin word Aranus, which his European translators translated as turquoise. Pliny used the Greek word kalais for turquoise. Post sapirus, sapiros, in antiquity sapiros probably referred to lapis lazuli, which while classified as a semi-precious stone is a rock, not a mineral. Later, of course, it meant the precious stone sapphire, which is a gemstone variety of the mineral corundum. Smaragdus, prasitus, et smaragdos, an emerald, which is a gemstone variety of the mineral beryl. The Greek name heprasitus comes from toprason, leek, that is, it is a gem that is leek green in color. Iaspis, Iaspis, what we call jasper from Latin iaspis, Greek iaspis, 
is an aggregate of micro quartz and or chalcedony and other mineral phases. It is an impure, opaque variety of silica. What stones Pliny calls eospis are green and translucent. Weird it, it's saipe tralucit eospis, he says, and are probably in part stones we would classify as chalcedony, such as agate. The word chalcedony comes from Latin chalcedonius, things that come from the Greek town of Chalcedon in Asia Minor. Mineralogically, chalcedony is a cryptocrystalline form of silica composed of very fine intergrowths of the minerals quartz and moganite. Some types of chalcedony appear in nature with color banding, as we shall see. Huacinthus crusolitos, the ancient identity of the stone the Roman world called Hyacinthus is uncertain, the modern hyacinth or jacinth is a yellow, orange, brown, or red variety of the gemstone zircon shown here. The ancient stone we know is blue. Crusolitos, in antiquity, gold stone was probably a type of topaz, perhaps what we call the oriental topaz, a yellow variety of the mineral corundum. Pure topaz is colorless and transparent but is usually tinted by impurities, so topaz appears in many different colors. Latin huacinthus comes from the Greek, and in Greek it means three different things. Huacinthos was the mythological Laconian youth, Hyacinthus, beloved and competed for by Apollo and Zephyrus. He was accidentally killed by a discus. Hohuacinthos was a flowering plant thought to have sprung up from the blood of Hyacinthus and on whose petals could be seen the Greek capital letters I or II. We don't know what plant the Greeks meant by this, but we're showing here a lovely picture of a lovely plant called the Hyacinthus orientalis. And thirdly, Hehuacinthos, sometimes also Hohuacinthos, a precious stone that our ancient sources describe as being of blue color. Onyx, onyx, a onukion, sardonyx, sardonyx, and onyx and sardonyx, as well as acates, agate, are examples of banded chalcedony, onyx being of black and white bands, sardonyx of red and white bands, and Acates, agate of curved bands. Qui angulati micant et scintillant. Hautai gegonio menai, goni odes tecai spinteroi des esin. Besdoar et lacrima kerwina, pestiferum virus ac venenosa dispelunt. Besdoar kai dacru e lapu, ta oletria tartica kai lugra ep arche. Not only gemstones, but also various animal concretions considered to be stones were used as charms or talismans and for cures and antidotes for, among other things, snake bites and poisons. Two such were the Bezoar stone and the so called stag's tear. The Bezoar stone was said to come from the stomach of a goat or a deer. If from a deer, was it the same as the Lacrima Kerwina? In the Exercitatio Centesima Duodecima de Viribus Lapidum et Animalium on the powers of stones and animals, from the collection Exotericae Exercitationes, published in 1557, an influential scientific work probably familiar to Comenius, Julius Kaiser Scaliger argued that the Bezoar and the Deer's Tear were not the same stone, in case you were interested. We still have Bezoars today. My daughter is a fan of the DC Comics series of comic books known as The Sandman, and she recalls that in one issue, a character manages to free the muse Calliope from her captor in exchange for a bezoar. 
Also, the word Bezoar is still used today to represent a mass found trapped in the gastrointestinal system of an animal, a type of gastrolith from gaster, stomach, and lethos. Modern medicine is experimenting with the injection of permeable so-called pseudobezoars for purposes of reducing stomach size, that is, for losing weight. Which makes me wonder, just as we look back and find the issue around bezoars in deer's tears laughable, what in today's medical practices will people several hundred years from now find laughable? Hematites, litos hematites, hematite, blood or Alectoria gemma, litos alectorios, from ho alector cock. Aetites, aetites litos, from ho aetos, eagle. Lapis bufonius, litos batrachios, from bufo and batrachos, frog. Sarda, sardion, lasdulus, lasdulos, sequiores sunt, hos litoi el telesterai ap eonisdontai. Ho batracos, bufo in Latin, is a frog. Tobatracion was a word for the green colored mineral malachite. For those who believe in such things, malachite is still counted among the healing crystals. Theophrastus, in his Periton Liton, distinguishes two varieties of sardion, red chalcedony, based first on their color and second on their sex. Yes, several stones were believed to have males and females. And again we ask, do stones grow in the earth? Theophrastus says, Tugar sardiu tomen diapanes eruthroteron de of sard, the one that is transparent and redder is called the female, toda diapanes melanteron de arsen, and the one that is transparent but darker is called the male, and telus, telea, telu is the Greek adjective for female, o arsen to arsen, genitive arsenos, a noun for male. Compare Pliny's description of Sarda in the Naturalis Historia, et in his autem, also in the case of the Sard stones, mares excitatius fulgent, the male ones glitter more brilliantly, feminae pigriores et crassius nitent, the female ones are more opaque, and mas mares is the Latin noun for male. Today we distinguish two varieties of sard, carnelian and sard, but not based on their sex. Lasduli in lapis lasduli is the genitive of the medieval Latin word lasdulum, which comes from the Arabic and ultimately from a Persian word. The name of the stone in Persian is also of a place where lapis lasduli was mined. Azure, the English word for the intense blue color of the lapis lazuli, comes from French lazur, from medieval Latin lazdurium, also from this Persian word. The Jewish high priest's breastplate of judgment in Exodus 28 was commanded to be set with 12 precious stones distributed in four rows, representing the 12, the 12 tribes of Israel. The Bible, especially the Old Testament, is a valuable source for the names of gemstones in antiquity since it provides a Hebrew name that was then translated both into Latin and into Greek. Into Latin in the Vulgate, St. Jerome's 4th century AD Latin translation of the Bible made the Catholic Church's official Latin Bible by the Council of Trent in the mid-1500s, and into Greek in the Septuagint, he metaprasis ton hebdomekonta, the translation of the 70, the translation of the Hebrew Bible into Koine Greek by allegedly 70 Jewish scholars in the pre-Roman Hellenistic Middle East. At one time or another, you must have been told what the birth stone or stones are for your month of birth, 
the concept of the birth stone is thought to go back to the breastplate of judgment, which is also known as the breastplate of Aaron. As in our other sources, the identities of the stones on this breastplate are mostly uncertain, but with a little research, we'll take a shot. So the first stone in the first row is Lapis Sardius, Septuagint Sardion, translated in the King James Bible as Sardius, and that was probably a carnelian. The second stone, Topazdius, Topazdion, Topaz, was probably a translucent gem quality stone of the olive green mineral olivine called peridot or chrysolite. And what the biblical text calls topaz, scholars believe was our chrysolite or peridot, but what the biblical text in the fourth row of the breastplate calls chrysolite, as we will see, biblical scholars believe was our topaz. And smaragdus, smaragdos, emerald. The second row begins with the carbunculus, anthrax, carbuncle, again a name for red gems, perhaps here the oriental ruby, sapirus, saperos, sapphire, and again saperos in antiquity probably was the lapis lazuli, iaspis, iaspis, jasper. In the third row, we have Ligurius, Ligurion, Ligur, very uncertain identity, possibly the hyacinthus, but then we don't know what the hyacinthus was, maybe a variety of zircon, maybe amber. Akates, Akates, agate, and Amethystus, Amethystos, Amethyst. According to Theophrastus, the name Akates, agate, comes from a river in Sicily named Akates. Amethystos means not intoxicated. Metuo is to be drunk with wine. The Greeks wore jewelry and made drinking vessels from amethyst in the belief that it prevented intoxication. And the fourth row, Chrysolithus, Chrysolithos, Chrysolite, probably topaz, Onucinus, Onucion, Onyx, and Berulus, Berulion, Beryl. The pure mineral beryl, Greek Berulos, diminutive to Berulion, is colorless, but it is also often tinted with impurities that give it many colors. Remember, the green emerald is a variety of the mineral beryl. With all this information about the names and identities or possible identities of various gemstones, let's revisit the sentence in Comenius. Gemarum pretiosissima est carbunculus, well piropus, secunda ab illa adamas, tum eranus, post sapirus, smaragdus, iaspis, Hyacinthus, Onyx, Sardonyx, etc., qui angulati micant et scintillant, vesdo ar et lacrima kerwina pestiferum virus ac venenosa dispelunt. Ton temion liton polutimotate anthrax et pirapos, delteron adamas, Epeta tuites litos, saperos, prasitis, esmaragdos, iaspis, crusolitos, onyx, e onukion, sardonyx, kaitaloi pa, hautai gonio des te kai spinteroe desesin, besdoar kai dacru elapu, ta oletria, tartica, kai lugra, ep arche. Margaritae et uniones, qui grandiusculi sunt, in conquis reperiuntur. Horum lineis luxuriantes mulierculae sese incingunt, tum etiam perforatis auriculis eostem illegant. Margaritae en concais heuriscontae, pois trypticos diacemenae cunaeces ten capalain ta kaita ota dia cosmusin. 
And here we have a portrait of a Caterina Sagredo Barbarigo decked out in her pearl earrings and necklace. I think she's beautiful. Num haec femina revera muliercula est? Ara ontos te cae ale tos haute gune trupticos diacetae? Pliny discusses pearls in Naturalis Historia. He says Margarita was the common name for pearls among Latins, Greeks, and barbarians, but that the fashion world in Rome added the name Unio, Uniones, because pearls are a unique gem, at least that was his etymology. They get their value, he says, from many aspects, their whiteness, large size, roundness, polish, and weight, dos omnis, incandore, magnitudine, orbe, levore, pondere, such that no two are found alike. Pearls come from two sources, saltwater clams and freshwater mussels, in both cases either natural, which is rare today, or cultivated. Saltwater clams and freshwater mussels are respectively the Pterioida and the Unionoida orders of the bivalve class of mollusks in the animal kingdom. Having just learned about Margaritae and Uniones, you can see where the names of families in the Unioida order come from. The name for saltwater clams, such as Pteroidae or pearl oysters, come from Greek Taptera, wings. By the way, the mm, edible order of oysters comes from the Greek word for oyster to ostraon. To know biology, it pays to know Latin and Greek. Coralia sunt arbusculae marinae ramusculi. Ta coralia cladiscoi dendriu talasiu estin. Question, is coral a lapis? that is a stone, possibly a gemstone, as Comenius obviously thought by including it in this topic on stones, or is it a plant or an animal? Answer. Theophrastus also included coral in his work on stones, saying togar coralion caigar tut hosper litos, and coral, and this indeed like a stone, te croia men erythron, in color, red, periperes de hos rista, in its shape though like a root, puetae dente palate, and it grows in the sea. Pliny, in his Naturalis Historia, describes it as like a plant, forma est ei fruticus, its form is like a shrub, but does so in a section on remedies derived from aquatic animals. So it sounds like Theophrastus and Pliny really weren't sure. It is only from the 19th century that coral has been correctly classified as a marine invertebrate belonging to the animal kingdom. For example, the precious or red coral named Coralium rubrum by Linnaeus in the Systema Naturae of 1758. Vitrum tralucens crystalli similitudinem habet non duritiem, scinditur smirite, and emery is used to score the glass in preparation for cutting it. It's also used to polish the already cut glass in which case you might say politur smirite. Ehuelos diapanes crystalloi emperestate ten men diapanean, udemos de ten scleroteta eke, tmete smiridi, tud est de temnetae smiridi. Question, if you are buying stemware, what is the difference between crystal and glass? Answer, lead. Crystal glassware has about 24% more lead, which is why it's sometimes called lead glass. The term crystal glass, in turn, is lead-free glassware. Traditionally, lead glass was called lead crystal, but misleadingly, 
since crystal in this meaning is unrelated to the naturally occurring crystalline solids of mineralogy, such as rock crystal or quartz, which is what holkrystalos meant. To the contrary, lead crystal is a manufactured variety of glass, which mineralogically is an amorphous non-crystalline solid. Is that clear? Crystal clear? We've come full circle in the Yanawa topic de la Pitibus Periton Litum. We started with sand, arena, psamatos, and we end with glass. The oldest and most common type of glass, silicate glass, is based on the chemical compound silica, which is the primary constituent of sand. We will reinforce all this with the Orbis Pictus but you can call yourself now a lithologist and a petrologist. Congratulations. Orbis pictus, lapides, oi litoi. Arena et sabulum, lapis est contritus. Epsamos, epsamatos, litos esti suntribes. Lapis parsest petrae, politos merosesti tes petras. Cos, silex, marmor sunt opaci lapides. E acone, calix, marmaros, litoe esin an elioe. Magmes atrahit ferrum. E magnetis litos pros elke ton sideron. Gemae lapides preteosi sunt pelucidi lapilei, ut candidus adamas, rubeus rubinus, cairulea sapirus, viridis smaragdus, et micant si angulati sunt. Litoi timioi litaria esti diapane, hos holeocos adamas, erythros rubinos, cuane saperos, chlora smaragdos, caestilbusi e gegoniomenoi esin. Margaritae in conchis crescunt, coralia in mare, Specie arbuscularum. Poi margaritae en concaes auxanontae, ta coralia en te talase hos dendria. Sucinum ad mare maxime in borusia colligatur, to electron para te talase malista en te borusiae sulegatae. Amber, as well as pearl, are examples of mineraloids, mineral-like substances that do not demonstrate crystallinity. Amber is fossilized tree rosin, distinct from plant sap. Where did it come from? Phaethon, whole Paethon, wanted confirmation from his father Helios that he really was the sun god's child. He insisted on driving the sun chariot, but lost control of the horses. Zeus struck him with a thunderbolt to prevent the sun from burning up the earth, and Phaethon plunged to his death. His mourning sisters, the Heliades, were metamorphosed into poplar trees, and their tears became the origin of amber. The English scientist William Gilbert is credited with applying the Greek word for amber, electron, to electricity. In his 1600 book, De Magnete, full title, De Magnete, Magnetikisque Corporibus, et De Magno Magnete Tellure, on the magnet and magnetic bodies, and on that great magnet, the earth. Tellus, tellurus, is another Latin word for earth. 
it was recognized since antiquity that amber had the power of attraction, that is, it has electrostatic properties. The Anglo-Irish physicist George Johnstone Stoney coined the term electron in the 1890s as the fundamental unit quantity of electricity. Vitrum est simile cristallo, e hugelos cristalloi homoiosistin. I don't want to cast a stone, but Comenius's Greek translators left out a common word for stone in Homer, frequently used as a weapon, ho laos, genitive tu laos. For example, toi, hectori, toi depetoxas donto kare kamo untes akaioi, but the flowing haired Achaeans kept pointing their bows at Hector, iosinta titus komenoi laesi te balon with arrows and with flung stones, striving ever to strike him. And for another example, while spears and swords make for a better picture, as in this vase painting, the duel between Hector and Ajax ended up in their clobbering each other with stones. It's an interesting example for us because presumably for reasons of meter and the repetition of stock formulae that scan, the poem uses three separate words for stone here. Al anakasomenos liton helepto keri pakee, but Hector gave back and in his heavy hand caught up a stone, kemenon in pedioi melana trecunta meganta, that lay in the plain, black and rugged and huge. Toe balan ayantos denon sacos hepta boeon. With this he struck the sevenfold oxide terrible shield of Ajax, meson ep ompalion, in the knob of the center, peri ekesendara kalkos, and the bronze clashed loud about it. Delteros aut aias polumes dona la anaeras, after him Ajax, in turn, lifting a stone far greater, heik epidine sas, ep eresa de hin ap elektron, whirled it and threw, leaning into his cast his strength beyond measure, esa daspi de axa balon mulo e de e petroi, and he broke the shield inward with this rock like a millstone, lapsa de hoi pilagunas, and he caused Hector's knees to give.